Here, as we can see, the planning starts with the acetabular side first. The three-dimensional scan allows me to accurately assess the orientation and sizing of the cup on multiple planes. This allows me to position the cup in the best bone stock for the patient and also to restore the anatomic center of rotation as well as the combined femoral and acetabular offset. The attention is then turned to the femoral side. Here again, I can assess the femur in three dimensions and choose the correct size stem for the specific patient. And I can move the stem up and down to increase or decrease the leg length. And I can also increase how far the femur sits away from the pelvis by choosing different angles of the femoral neck. One of the new features of this system is the what we call VROM or virtual range of motion assessment. Um, as you can see here, we're putting the patient's leg into 50 degrees of extension to see if there is prosthetic impingement. So that red area tells us that the femur is actually hitting the edge of the cup. And therefore, we can make adjustments to the position of the cup to eliminate that impingement, which can lead to dislocation of the hip. Here again, now we're bringing the hip into flexion. Again, the red areas denote areas of impingement, which can cause posterior dislocation. There is a bony osteophyte at the front, which I will remove during the operation. And again, we're putting 150 degrees of flexion, so the hip can be flexed up to 150 degrees without any risk of impingement and potential dislocation. Having this inflammation before doing the surgery is obviously crucial and it would otherwise be very difficult to detect these subtle changes without use of such technology. Here then I also get an x-ray image of the final prosthesis. This is what we are used to looking at as surgeons and again if I can look at the x-ray and say that this is perfect then it is very reassuring and is again another level of check that I can perform at this stage. I can also use different stems. Here I'm actually trialing and planning uh, the hip with a cemented stem before it was an uncemented stem. So again, depending on the patient's age and bone stock, I can individualize the type of a stem that better suits them. And this greatly reduces the risk of intraoperative or postoperative fractures of the femur, which are one of the risk factors of hip surgery. Here I make measurements in terms of where I need to cut the femoral neck during the operation. So I take certain anatomic landmarks and I make digital measurements. And then you will see during the surgical video, I then use these measurements intraoperatively to ensure that the neck is cut at the appropriate level, which again will reduce the risk of errors in terms of restoring the leg length. So if you can get your stem to exactly where you planned, then getting the leg length wrong is highly unlikely. Final adjustments and fine tuning is made if necessary and we'll then start with the operation. Here I begin the surgery by making a 8 to 10 centimeter incision over the anterior anterolateral aspect of the hip to access the hip joint. As you can see my nursing staff uh, stand on the opposite side of the table and me and my orthopedic fellow stand on the surgical side. Here a femoral marker is placed on the proximal femur which will assist later in measuring the changes in femoral length and offset. Here a baseline measurement of the patient's femoral length and offset is made prior to cutting the femoral neck. As I mentioned in the surgical planning video, I use the software to determine the level of the neck cut and proceed with cutting the femoral neck and removing the femoral head. A special T-handled corkscrew is driven into the femoral head, which is levered out of the joint. The head is either sent away 
to be used as donor tissue or discarded. Once the femoral head is excised, the femur is exposed and the femoral canal is prepared using special brooches which progressively expand a femoral canal until a firm and stable fit of the prosthesis is achieved. Once I'm happy with the femoral preparation, my attention is turned to the acetabulum. Next, real-time tracking and mapping of the acetabular bone is carried out and communicated via the specialized pointer to the robotic software. This way, the robot can match the patient's real-time bony anatomy to that of the preoperative CT scan. Once the robot is happy that the patient's anatomy has been accurately mapped, and matched to the patient's preoperative CT scan, then the acetabular reaming can begin. In this patient, a size 52 cup was templated. One of the important benefits of the robotic surgery is that only a single reaming pass is required to prepare the acetabular bed for the final cup. This helps to greatly reduce soft tissue damage, blood loss, in addition to eliminating the need for intraoperative x-rays, greatly improving the efficiency and flow of the operation. Once the acetabular bone has been successfully mapped and matched, the size 52 reaming basket is positioned inside the acetabulum. The robotic arm is then brought in and the reaming handle is then connected to the reaming basket which was placed inside the socket earlier. Once I'm happy that the reamer is fully seated, the reaming begins. The bone that needs to be uh, removed is shaded as green on the screen and I gently progress the reaming until all the green highlighted bone has been successfully excised. This method restricts the amount of bone that needs to be removed to an absolute minimum, thus preserving the patient's own bone stock, in addition to preventing excessive mutilization of the cup. Traditionally, at this stage, one would have to use intraoperative x-rays to determine the position and orientation of the cup. However, with the help of the robot, we've been able to remove this extra step, which helps to reduce radiation to both the staff and the patient. Once the reaming is completed, the reaming handle is removed and the cup introducer and the cup are then loaded onto the robotic arm and gently introduced into the acetabulum. The robotic arm will then lock the orientation of the cup into 40 degrees of inclination and 18 degrees of antiversion as per original plan, which was based on the patient's spinopelvic mechanics. This ensures that the cup is positioned with great deal of accuracy, which is greatly important in reducing the risk of postoperative dislocations. As can be seen in the right-hand picture, the patient's anatomic center of rotation has been restored with high degree of accuracy with no change or alteration in the north-south axis and only two millimeters of extra medialization. The leg is then gently brought up and the hip is reduced. As can be seen on the screen, the patient's leg length has been increased by three millimeters, which is exactly what we had planned earlier, and the combined offset is increased by two millimeters, which is negligible and which confirms restoration of the patient's anatomy. Uh, following this, the trial components are removed and the final definitive implants are impacted in place. The hip is reduced and closed.
Due to the stability of the hip and minimally invasive nature of the surgery, the patient can be mobilized on the day of the surgery and the hip can be moved in any direction as comfort allows without any concerns regarding potential risk of dislocation. Crutches are used for the first week or two. However, the patients are encouraged to discard the crutches as their comfort levels allow over a period of two to four weeks. Patients generally stay in hospital for three to four days and are discharged to a formal outpatient physiotherapy program. In summary, the robot is an exciting new development that allows us to position our implants more precisely, which in turn greatly reduces the risk of perioperative complications such as impingement, dislocation, or preprosthetic fractures. This will in turn improve the longevity of the implants and most importantly, improve patient function and satisfaction. I hope this video has been informative and I look forward to assisting you in my rooms at St. Vincent Clinic. Thank you.